Hi uh, YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my review for Game of Thrones Season 2, Episode 4, Garden of Bones. As always, I'll split this between uh, non-spoiler stuff, and then I'll tell you when I'm going to switch over to comparing it to the books, which will be spoiler for anyone that hasn't read the books. Um, okay, first, if anyone notices, at least on this channel, that I put up a video yesterday of when I went to see the show at Professor Tom's Bar uh, in Manhattan. It's on 14th Street and 2nd Avenue. Um, it, um, it was a fun time. They put you in the upstairs, like, loft, where it basically fits about a hundred or so people. Um, you have, there were a couple of, um, they used to do it for the show Lost, and then because that's over now, they, I guess they wanted to do something else. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, basically they have themed drinks. They only had a couple of themed drinks. I was a little pissed off. They had two meads which my friend got, and he was upset that it was only in a wine glass and it was kind of low in alcohol, you know, and it was like 12 bucks. Uh, I got a Ice and Fire, which was whiskey, pomegranate juice, some, like, syrup, and uh, they crushed a jalapeno into it to um, add the fire part. There were two other drinks. There was a Dire Wolf, which I don't remember what went into it. It was kind of lemony, I guess, for, like, the lemon cakes thing, and then there was something else. Um... Oh, the Tears of Lease, which I thought was funny. I wanted to try that, but I switched over to something else. Um, plus, it was happy hour prices for beer, so I kind of, you know. Um, it was it was a real, it was a great atmosphere. Everyone kind of shut up during the show. Um, you know, they laughed at appropriate times, but it's a show you got to pay attention to. So everyone was like actually pretty quiet. Um, also, there were no commercials, like I'm sure there were with Lost for you know when they watched it then. Uh, so people weren't as drunk. Because uh, they weren't getting up and down asking for a drink, so um, so I guess that's a little counterproductive. But still, it was a great time. I would recommend anyone to go. Um, but yeah, all right. Anyway, um, on to the episode. It was a brutal episode. That would be the word I would use to describe it. Brutal. Um, it moved. I thought really, really fast. It was only like fifty-one minutes long, or something like that. So that you know added to it. Um, it wasn't as crisp, I guess, as last week's, um, and it wasn't as, like, emotional, which, you know, I more, you know, go towards something like when it's like that, um, but, uh, but that's me, so I, but I, I, I thought it was very good, um, alright, uh, people that set out this week were John, Cersei, everything at Winterfell, Theon, all the Greyjoys, Jamie, uh, again, um, and someone that didn't sit out, uh, who said out last week was Danny. I guess I'll just start with Danny. Uh, it's gonna be a long review. Um, Danny finally got a move on, and uh, finally got somewhere, which she needed to do. She needed to stop being around in the desert and get to somewhere. So, um, so though, so she made it to Karth, which um, kind of looked like Troy, a little bit, except CGI instead of actually building a wall. Well, they did build. Actually, they did build a wall. They built a part of it. So, so I thought it looked pretty good. Uh, we'll see how it looks on the um, on the inside, I guess, next week, which uh, I'm looking forward to. Um, again, Danny hasn't had much to do yet because kind of introducing the other characters and everything else going on in Westeros is kind of more important right now. Um, so now that that's been done, she's probably going to take over a bit more. Uh, so it's kind of structured pretty well, at least I think for the season, for her now really to get going. Um, the scene when she's outside the gates... Um, was actually pretty funny to me. Um, how the, the 13 were just kind of, like, correcting her, and, uh, it was actually full of a lot of, like, good, you know, like, witty dialogue and good comic timing on part of, like, Amelia Clark, who, you know, was reacting, just obviously annoyed that these people were, you know, just bullshitting back and forth with her. Um, so I thought it was actually pretty well done, pretty, uh... Pretty funny, and it's, it's a little hard to buy into Danny's like screaming and yelling when basically they can just leave her there and she's dead. Uh, but she ha happened to pull that off, I think, a little bit too. Um, so yeah, it was funny. The episode was written by uh, a new writer, Vanessa Taylor, uh, first woman to write for the show. Um, I thought she did a really, really good job with um, you know with the dialogue and structuring everything. And um, I'd uh, I would look forward. She's doing another episode this year, so I'm gonna look forward to that one. So uh, yeah, good job on her. Um, alright, I'll switch over to... Yes, I have notes. I'll switch over to, uh, King's Landing. Joffrey just beats down, um... 
Santa, which was Santa, Sansa, which was uh, hard to watch. Um, but when Tyrion came in uh, and started schooling, basically Joffrey and the King's Guard and everything, the whole place we were there was really like, laughing out loud and cheering. And I was so pissed off that I didn't record that. Um, I was actually into the show and I forgot to record it. So, you know, that's just idiot. Um, speaking of Joffrey, uh, if that scene wasn't bad enough, there was the scene with the two escorts, prostitutes, Roz and the other girl that was, I think, from the first episode. Um, and maybe the girl that was with Pycelle last week. This, um, this was pretty bad and it was... I think pretty it's pretty like controversial where people were kind of upset that the HBO even that the writers even did this that it wasn't really needed um, but uh, I'll just say that uh, I'm glad that they cut away when they did it almost seemed like that was like the writers and HBO's like limit like yeah we're not going to show this uh, you know because he started beating her with like the the belt and then he picked up like the wood and I'm like oh god I guess he's just I guess he just she just hit her with it which is bad enough. I mean, I heard people online thinking that, you know, he was going to have the other girl, like, sodomize her with it. It's just really brutal stuff. Um, I know people didn't like it, that they felt it was unnecessary. Obviously, the point of it was that Joffrey was going to give Tyrion back the girl, and basically that was his way of getting back. Also showing how sadistic he is, you know, kind of behind the scenes and everything like that. I thought the scene had a point... Um, it was well done by the three actors in it, so I didn't really have a problem with it being there. But if someone, if someone out there's watched the show that really just felt it was out of place, too long, all this stuff, I'm, I'm not gonna really argue. I wouldn't really argue with you. Um, I think it was just really more preference with that one. Um, not that I preferred watching it. I'm just saying, um, as far as if it was a well done scene or even necessary. But, uh, alright, moving on. Um, Tyrion and Lancel's scene was probably, I think, the funniest scene the show has ever done. Um, Peter Dinklage, again, just basically owns everything that he's in. Uh, the actor who plays Lancel was really, really funny. It was funny last season. Um, and it was just it was just a great scene. It, um, yeah, it was, it was just really, really good. Uh, okay, moving on. Rob... The episode started with Rob with the two no with the two Lannister guards, which I thought they did a nice little like fan service of like basically saying who could beat the other one, which character could beat the other character. I've heard that you know online a lot you know forms you know with the Hound or the Hound and the Kingslayer fighting all this stuff. So I thought that was actually pretty funny, pretty well done. Um, I've also heard that someone pointed out this was their best version of not doing a battle where it cut to the wolf, you know, killing the two guys, and then to the next day after the battle, or showed Rob, and then the next day. Which is true. It was actually transitioned really, really well, really well better than Dinklage getting knocked out last year, anyway. Um, so they're improving on that. Um, I like how Rob's new love interest was basically calling him out on his leadership, on that he's really maybe not that much better than the other kings, because if he's going to leave you know, this world in basically a shithole after he kills Joffrey, then what is he really doing? Yes, he's killing Joffrey, but then, you know, it's almost like Robert, who just didn't want to deal with all that stuff. Um, so it was a nice, like, little, like, rude awakening for him, or at least someone telling him that, um, you know, the price that he's going to have to pay for doing all this stuff. So, uh, so I thought that was a nice little scene. If, if also a little obvious with her dialogue going back and forth, like, you know, you know, did he kill, uh, cut your, your, uh, father's head off? And, you know, some of that was a little too obvious, but, but whatever. Um, moving on to Harrenhal, which looks fantastic. Um, the director of the episode, David Nutter, I think he's done, like, some True Blood and other stuff in HBO. Awesome. It, w it wasn't as, I think, as visually, like, great or just lit, probably, as the first three episodes, but really everyone's up their game as far as directors go on this season so I'm I'm really happy I was a little worried about a drop off and I'm not worried anymore so that was uh, that was pretty good um, the new guy they cast as the mountain I am I was one of the people that basically said that uh, oh it's not gonna matter the mountain had one line last season yes he was big he looked great you know they'll be able maybe they'll find even a better actor not impressed with what I saw he just looked really tall it just, compared to the first season, this guy, you know, 
at least on the surface, doesn't impress me. If they give him some lines and actually, you know, a little bit more to do, instead of just saying, you, or, I don't know, whatever he said the Tywin, but, uh, if they give him a little more to do, then, okay, fine. You know, see what he's got, see how evil he is and everything, but, as of right now, not impressed. Um, the rat torture was terrible, and apparently that is something that used to actually happen. Um... I think, at least I've heard that. I didn't look it up, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I heard that a couple of times. Um, yeah, so that was just terrible. That's all I really got about that. Um, they were gonna do the same thing to Gendry, and then Tywin Lannister rode in. And um, actually, wait. Before I get to that, when they were gonna, when they burned the first guy, um, or they put the, you know, they burned the bucket on the first guy with the rat on there. Guy who's the the tickler from the books. That's his name. The guy that was sitting there, I guess, eating and just basically doing the whole thing. He stood out more than the mountain did for me. That's not good. He's supposed to be a little bit under the mountain as far as you know, awful. And it didn't seem that way. Um, Maisie Williams, though, watching it, you can tell she wasn't just like upset. She was just like getting like angrier and angrier, and you could see like her like rage almost in her face. She's fantastic. You know, there's not enough praise for her, pretty much. Nor there is any enough praise for Charles Dance, who came in as Tywin. Actually, everyone was actually happy to see him for the first time ever, and uh, he just just commands basically like you know the screen pretty much when he shows up. He did it last year. He does it again this year, and uh, he's he's just brilliant. Um, I know I said at the beginning of the of the review that this show was a brutal hour, and it was, but. I have to say that the violence, if you, after rewatching the episode, they didn't really show any of it. Yes, you saw the sawing into the leg. You didn't see the sawing into the leg at the beginning of the episode. You didn't see the wolf like rip apart the guys at the beginning of the episode. You heard the sawing through the leg. Sansa getting beat, you saw, but it wasn't like bloody or anything. The whole thing with Joffrey and the the two girls, you didn't see it as bad as it got. Uh, you saw her, like, hit her with the belt in the ass. I mean, that's, you know... You can probably see that on regular network TV. Um, with this stuff, with the torture scenes, everyone... It's particularly awful, but it's just a... Uh, you think about it, it's a bucket strapped on a guy, and the guy's yelling, and the bucket's, like, a little bit on fire. Like, that's all we really saw when we heard the rat noises. Even at the beginning of the Harrenhal scene, you know, they're hearing or they're watching some guy get, like, tortured, and apparently it looks like he's getting, like, ripped apart or something awful. And you don't see it, you just hear it. So, for as brutal and as gratuitously, like, you know, violent that everyone's saying this episode was, we really didn't see any of it. Um, in fact, we've seen much more and much other, on a lot of other episodes. So, um, so it's a nice little trick they got there. All right, moving on to Renly's camp. Littlefinger and uh, Marguerite's scene was, was a lot of fun. It, um, Marguerite was almost like a female, like, Varys. Or, yeah, Varys is still a man, but, yeah, so it was, it was a nice, like, back and forth between the two of them, and I'm looking forward to more than that, more of that. Um, Littlefinger scene with Catelyn, Michelle Fairley was just fantastic, a huge, like, range of emotions. Um, Aiden Gillian, too, plays Littlefinger. Both of them, I think that was their best scenes of the season for, um, best scene of the season for both of them. Um, they were just really, really good. Um, the music was great again when Catelyn was looking at Ned's bones. It was just, it was really, really well done. Renly's scene with Littlefinger was very, very funny. Uh, but I thought it was really cut short because we cut, um, later on in the episode to Renly and Stannis. And the scene, like, Littlefinger is talking to Renly, like, you know, I, um, he basically tells him, uh, like, it's cut off mid-sentence what he says. Like, I'm not here for this or whatever. And then later on, next time we see Renly, he's, you know, treating with uh, Stannis. It would be nice if we got, like, you know, someone come in like, oh, Stannis is, you know, fucking outside. Um, or whatever. Just to at least ratchet it up. Because uh, that, that was a little oddly oddly done. Um, but the Stannis-Renly uh, face-off was great. It was full of a lot of uh, humor and... Um, uh, very frustrating, and it was also kind of sad to hear Renly say, can you believe I loved him once? And it was just, it was sad uh, to see two brothers like that, that if they didn't unite, they really would, you know, get the job done. But, yeah, it's not gonna happen. 
Uh, also, I like how it's a running joke that status is compared to food. First season, it was a lobster. This year, it's a, it's a ham. Um, yeah, I just think that's that's pretty damn funny. Uh, all right, getting to the end of the episode. First, Stannis is uh, correcting Davos with his gra <coughs> excuse me with his grammar. Um, it's like the second time that happened this episode. First, first it was Danny mispronouncing Karth, um, and now. Stannis has to say, you know, fewer uh, to Davos. Just another little, like, funny joke that was in the episode twice, so I assume it was um, done on purpose. Uh, which I just thought was great, both ways. Um, Davos and Melisandre rowing along. You can tell that Liam Cunningham and uh, Carice Van Houten are friends. You can watch, see it on Twitter that they're both friends, and they just have a good back and forth going. Um... Which is a nice light thing before, um, yeah, the uh, smoke monster came out of uh, Mel Melisandre's uh, vagina. Which, um, by the way, people saying that, oh, that's where the smoke monster came from, kind of annoys me that that probably is the best explanation I still got for why the smoke monster was a smoke monster. But anyway, the, um, the birthing scene somehow was able to be a huge, you know, what the fuck, and completely ridiculous, yet not comical, so that's a huge A-plus to everyone involved that was able to pull it off. Um, oh, so I thought the Shadow Baby looked like uh, the the symbiote from, like, Spider-Man, instead of really the smoke monster, but whatever. Um, yeah, alright, so that was the episode. Uh, I thought it was great. It was even better on a rewatch. Uh, season's moving, like, full speed ahead. Uh, if you remember at this point, last season, episode four, last season ended with uh, Catelyn capturing Tyrion, and that's where everything kind of skyrocketed for the rest of the year, rest of the season. Uh, so that's pretty much at the spot we're at now. And uh, I think through four episodes, we're moving at a faster pace than we were last year, and I love it. All right, that's it. I'll uh, see you next week for this part of the review. I'm going to switch over to the book spoiler part now. So, uh, anyone that doesn't be spoiled. Okay. Okay. Missing out this week. Like I said before, was John. We'll get back with him next week. He'll be at the Fist of the First Men. Maybe we'll meet Half Hand. Uh, but it's good because it's a week off to change like his setting. Uh, Theon's plan to take Winterfell starts next week because you can see that... Uh, Roderick talking to Bran in the trailer for next week, telling him that, you know, something's been taken. Um, I think this was the first episode of the series that Lena Headey wasn't in as Cersei. I'm pretty sure it was the first one. So, um, a nice vacation for her. Jamie, you know, just as Jamie's um, third episode sit out, I don't know if he's going to be in it next week, but um, as far as the books go, he's already been in this season. I think almost like tied for as long as he's been in that's as long as he was in the second book um so he's gonna he'll get his time in the second half as they move up a storm of swords into it okay danny i don't remember how it went down getting to Korth, karth but um how it went down exactly i'm sure it wasn't the way they did it i know um i don't even know if zaro zaxo duck sauce that's what it sounded like duck sauce um, helped her. I don't remember if that's what he did. Uh, but I love the 13, and Piat Pri was one of the guys standing there. He's the bald guy with the, the blue lips, which is... I think that's what everyone thought uh, Zaro was going to look like, too, but whatever. Um, that guy, the guy, Zaro, was, was in The Grey, the Liam Neeson movie that I loved earlier this year, so he's a quality actor. I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to see what he does with the character. And... I have no problem with the way Korth on the outside looks. On the inside, we got a very brief glimpse. I'm, I'm not going to pass judgment on it yet. Um, we'll wait to see next week to see how it looks. I'm excited to see how it looks. All the insides, you know, all the outfits and everything. I know they're not going to go with the one breast outfit. Uh, so anyone looking for that next week, you're, you're going to be disappointed. It's not happening. Um, and uh, as far as Danny goes, they're going to obviously expand Danny's time in Korth because she's not going to sit out, I don't think, anymore the rest of the season, except for the Blackwater episode. So, um, yeah, so they're basically just going to expand it uh, until she gets to the House of the Undying. So, uh, good. Good. It needs to, at least from the book perspective. King's Landing, I was very happy to see the Sansa scene was nowhere near as brutal as it was in the book. 
They weren't outside throwing fruit at her. A um, little disappointed that the Hound didn't say enough, which basically triggers Joffrey to stop beating her and then to strip her. Um, they kept in her, him giving her the cape. I'm not like a big Sansan fan, but it was just from the book. It was it was you know nice little moment for the Hound. Um, but it looks like they're gonna like slow burn that and kind of not push it. So, uh, but we'll see. Um, the rest of that scene with Tyrion talking with Meryn Trant and Joffrey and Bronn, it was just like all taken from the book. It was fantastic. Um, uh, although I don't know if Bronn was there, but whatever. It was all taken from the book. It was great. Um, the Tyrion Lancel scene, again, I think that was outside somewhere in the book, but fantastic. Uh, again, just like the book, except talking about him spilling his dew on Cersei's stomach, but still, I guess they didn't need to put that in there. Um, Roose Bolton was the guy talking with Rob. He looks particularly like Icy Cold, which is good, what we need. Um, okay, Talisa, Talia, whatever her name is, who's playing by Una Chaplin. She's the new, she's Jane Westerling, and I really don't have any complaints about the fact that she's, you know, I think she's particularly gorgeous, but Jane in the book, like, you don't see her, and when you eventually do see her, you know, she's like a crying mess in A Feast for Crows, so, you know, whatever they want to add to the character, I think it's great. They're clearly going to change Rob's storyline. Um, I don't comp I don't really care about how they do it, as long as it ends... I mean, the only thing they really would change is why he would marry her, um, which looks like it's going to be for genuine love instead of honor. Um... But, uh, or at least I think they're going to go that way. As long as it leads to the Red Wedding, or I think it will, then, you know, whatever. I'm fine with it. Um, let's see. Oh, people complaining about Una Chaplin. I heard people, like, on Westeros, like, .org or, or other stuff complaining because she's, like, half, she's, like, Spanish and, you know, just... First of all, one, you know, shut up with that. Two, she's, like, the... You know, it, like, all right, it's one thing to say, like, you know, like, they cast someone, you know, like, Spanish or someone when you think it's supposed to be, everyone's supposed to be, like, white. Um, it's one thing to complain about that, you know, like, the way people are now, which is, like, ridiculous. It's not like they fucking cast, like, Rosie Perez or something like that. That's bad casting. This isn't bad casting. This is just people being stupid because she's, like, half Spanish. You know, she's, like, the granddaughter of, like, of Charlie Chaplin. Like, look it up. So, how can you complain about that? So, whoever doesn't like it because of that particular reason, you're an idiot. I'm sorry. Um, okay, Harrenhal. Harrenhal exceeding my expectations in the book. I just pictured, like, a shithole, and here it looked like a shithole, but a glorious-looking shithole. So, um, that was fantastic. The tickler was appropriate. Um, I already said about the, the, the mountain. I do want to know if they're going to include the awful scene from the book where Arya overhears the knight talking about the scene where the mountain, um, where they all they basically rape the guy's daughter because he makes some like remark, and then kill the guy's son because the son tries to interfere, and then the hound like throws the guy a silver after everyone's done raping the daughter, and then he says she wasn't good enough, give me back a copper or something like that. I want to know if they're going to include that? I'm pretty. Sure, they won't. But anyone think the show is worse in the books as far as, like, things awful and brutal? Remember that scene. So, alright. If we see that, then, then I think, you know, complaints are necessary. Um, Arya as Tywin's cupbearer, you know, I'm sure it's just going to lead to good things. Uh, at least the scene between the two of them, it looks like we're going to get next week, so I really can't wait for it, so that's fine. That's fine by me. Um, it looks like they're going to humanize Tywin a little bit, kind of like how they've done Cersei and Stannis and, and Littlefinger, um, which I, uh, I have no problem with. Um, they can still be a compel you can be a compelling character and evil and or whatever, so I like it. Speaking of Littlefinger, um, the Littlefinger and Cat scene, again, it was more the idea that Littlefinger is being much more human. Um, which means he's being a little more, I guess, stupid than he is in the books. It's There's a better word for it. Uh, but he's not thinking 100 feet ahead all the time, it looks like. He also is thinking very, very, like, with... Not completely with his brain. 
uh, as it says he seems to do in the books. Um, I was glad to see Ned's bones brought. I think they did it at, um, at River Run in the, in the books, but uh, it was here. It was fine. It was a good way to condense things again. Getting worried that they're going to have Catelyn release Jamie without her finding out about Brandon Rickon, which I don't want. Because I think that really diminishes like her character. If they do that, I'm not going to be happy about that. That's going to annoy me. Now, if this is supposed to be like a slow like beatdown of where she keeps on getting reasons to release them, to release them, and then finally she hears about Brandon Rickon and that sets her off, fine. But if they don't do that, I'm not going to be happy about that. But, wait and see. Um, Marjor Marjorie and Littlefinger talking... Again, it's a nice setup. The two of them working together, which they're going to for the purple wedding. You know, you can see it already, so I like that. The Stannis Renly scene, I was pissed off there was no uh, Peach. Maybe it looked a little too ridiculous to do it, but I was still. I, I missed it. Um, also, hearing Renly say sorry after um, after he says no one wants you for your king, for uh, their king. But. Um, they added the line about the ham, so that was extra funny. So, um, it was just a little different, but Renly was still pretty much as he was in the book. Um, so, it's fine with it. Okay, as far as the end goes, the Shadow Baby I thought was, uh, just impressive. Um, I forgot in the books that she actually, that we see what happens to Renly before we see her do the, uh, the Shadow Baby thing at Storm's End forgot about it. it was done that way completely forgot it was done that way um obviously there's no storm's end right now in the show they're at least not going to go there so again more condensing um which again is fine um i guess i i can't believe i i, I would have put like five hundred dollars at least on this episode just that it would end with renly's uh death I thought we were going to go from Shadow Baby to Renly's Tent, and that's it. Um, in fact, that's why I wanted to go to the bar, because you get a free jello shot if someone dies. And the bar thought Renly was going too, because they handed out jello shots as the episode was about to come to an end. So, uh, I think the show screwed that bar out of, out of jello shots. Um, but, whatever. Um, yeah, so... That's it. All right. So next week's gonna have Renly's death, which already looking forward to. I like Renly, but I'm just I just mean as a good scene and everything else. It's called the Ghost of Harren Hall, so we'll get to see probably at least two of those, two out of three of those certain things that will happen with that, and um, everything else will ratchet up. Things will move forward. It looks like there might not be any King's Landing next week, which would probably be smart considering that John and Theon and Winterfell will all be back in it. Um, but, okay, we shall see. All right, um, I'll be back with this next week. Later.